What a do, what a do, what a do, da da do, da da do. Hello, welcome to OLT 322, Lecture 4 on the Harlem Renaissance. My name is Warren Reed, and hopefully by the time I'm through, we can have cleared up maybe some of your confusions about what's in the course material. Okay. The Harlem Renaissance. What was it? It was an artistic and intellectual movement that gave the world a taste of the talents of African Americans and black people in general. Why Harlem? Harlem was a residential area of New York City, and after slavery, when many blacks moved north, they settled among their fellows, and in New York, that area was Harlem. And when they were there, they met blacks who had never been slaves, so they exchanged ideas, a different perspective. They also met white people who weren't racist or who weren't um, trying to oppress them as they were in the South. Um, it was also a result of the growing black consciousness that began with the activities of Frederick Douglass and other abolitionists. Another factor was that many had fought in World War I and came back with a sense of their self-worth. They'd proved themselves in battle, and they'd proved, them, proved against the racists what they were capable of doing. And they came back, and they weren't just going to settle into the old ways as before, because they had fought alongside white soldiers for freedoms that they didn't even get in their own country. Also, a number of black leaders had been contributing over time, ideas that helped to fuel the creative fires of the Harlem Renaissance. For example, there was Booker T. Washington, who wanted blacks to accept the separate development, and instead of struggling against it, to concentrate on building wealth, because he believed wealth, a, a seat of wealth, would be a way to overcome further obstacles. James Weldon Johnson wanted blacks and whites to assimilate. W.E.B. Du Bois, he sought equal integration. And then there was Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey wanted blacks to be in charge of their own fate, separate from whites, and he started companies such as the Black Star Steamship Company to support his Back to Africa movement. The idea, obviously, was for blacks to return to Africa. He also advocated black pride and unity and self-help. Black intellectuals didn't agree with him, and most of his followers were the majority poor. So you can see, at this time, in the 1920s, 1930s, there was a rich climate of exchange of ideas, and this is a perfect, perfect ground. As such, this climate was full of ideas, different ideas in their exchange, and it was a perfect setting for expansion of creativity. And while some aspects of the Harlem Renaissance appealed to the masses, such as the jazz music and, and the art, the leaders were elitist, part of Dubois' talented tenth. And this leads us to the new Negro. It was an idea said to be from Alain Locke, and was based on a book called the comes from a, a book called the New Negro. And the New Negro was a self-aware person, free from racial inferiority complexes. Steps to achieving this were to appreciate Black history, to have self-respect self-reliance, and a spiritual emancipation. The new Negro defined himself rather than letting others define him. He would live at peace and in equality with others. Locke wanted blacks to be integrated, to cooperate and contribute as members of American society, just like anybody else. Accordingly, many poets wrote about unity and used imagery of the African past. White critics became interested in Black art and white philanthropists and anthropologists were often be seen in Harlem. Local businesses supported the movement because it brought a lot of visitors, who of course spent their money. The Harlem Renaissance is also famous for the music, jazz. Africa became an important symbol then in the art of the time as artists and writers sought their roots and a connection to the past which slavery had destroyed. You will find this also with Claude McKay, which we're going to talk about next. 
Their artistic excellence was recognized, but the Renaissance, of course, came to an end as all good things do eventually. A major factor in this was the Great Depression. Um, you can read about that. I'm not, gonna, I'm not an economist, but suffice to say that a lot of money was lost and millions lost their investments and homes, so there was little money to support the arts. Blacks, who were mostly poor already, suffered even worse poverty than they had previously under the Depression. The Harlem Renaissance is noted for its poetic creativity, and in the next section, the next lecture, we will discuss one of those poets, Claude McKay. <laughs> Get down.